<laughs> I sure do love myself some fine art. Just look at it. Magnificent. <laughs> ah, boy, do I love wasting my money. Oh, you over there. What might you be showing off at this fine establishment? Huh? Oh, uh, just showing off this really cool game to people that are passing by. Good heavens! What are you doing here with such a horrid... ...thing? Well, games are my favorite form of art, so I thought I would just kind of bring it here and see if people want to check it out. Games aren't art! But, well, yeah, of course games are art. I mean, I, I, I've never really understood that argument. No, they're I mean, not! Like they're not art! They can't and possibly and art. Art. To be art! I don't know why, like, combining all of those different mediums of art, like entertainment, would all of a sudden not make it art. I mean, like, video games have elements of my, art. My ape that I've hate thousands upon thousands of thousands of dollars! That's true art! This thing is hard to show into the that this can't you possibly be right. What you? Like well, well, that is hard, but, but this is not. Good. You have no. that like good elements of typography to make sure like the you know, actual like, art itself like fits the logo. Spend all of my money on these ape drawings for thousands. This title alone, you got like so many elements of art. And what the are you doing? It's not fair that you you're allowed to enjoy video games as art. But my apes, them, my beautiful apes, they're true art. They are. I earned them through the millions of dollars I made by taking advantage of people. I just, I don't understand it. Video games are art. And no, I'm not going to hear any ifs, ands, or buts about it from the peanut gallery. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm allergic to peanuts. Despite what Harold over here might lead you to believe, yes, video games are in fact art. In fact, it's my favorite form of art by a long shot. Look, I love drawing and making sculptures and stuff, but when you can take multiple different forms of art, photography, music, film, drawing, and animation, and then mash it all together into something interactable, yeah, of course I'm gonna love it. And there are so many different ways of presenting it all too, whether it be through the genre, gameplay, or even just the tone and story. The first part of a game that many are going to notice right off the bat, though, is the art direction. More specifically, its style. And here. When the art styles for games come up, a lot of people probably think of gritty, realistic shooters in open worlds, or classic 2D pixel art. But there are so many different, unique, cool, creative, and beautiful ways of presenting a game, which is exactly what I wanted to talk about today. Whether it be 2D or 3D, cell shaded or pixelated, I wanted to explore just how creative games can get with their visual identity when given the time, love, and effort they deserve. So to start off, I thought it would only be fitting to begin where it began. 2D pixelated sprites. What better game to talk about creative art styles than one of the most creative and unique JRPGs from the 90s? set itself apart from other games right off the bat because instead of taking place in like a like a grand fantasy world the whole thing is set smack dab in the middle of smelly america and all of our western <clears throat> culture oh dang diddly i can't wait to buy myself a cheeseburger and beat up a local street gang kids can i get a yee that frank frank for sake we talked about this you can't give people a handshake while you're holding a knife putting that aside earth set itself apart visually from other RPGs of its time too. It had this Peanuts inspired sprite work for the character designs, weird off the wall enemies, and most notably of all, its trippy looking battle backgrounds. It uses multiple layers of animated pixel art to create these vivid mesmerizing backgrounds of bright colors and interesting patterns. It's like staring into a lava lamp that's trying to kill you. Norm. Sometimes it'll be waves of color, sometimes it'll be more like blinking lights, and sometimes, I'll be blunt, it's a portal of f***ing hell! Oh! Oh, 
just wonder where my deodorant was. <laughs> Same goes for the PSI attack animations. These are really cool as well. No wonder I'm doing so much damage to him with this attack. I probably just gave him a seizure from flashing so many lights and colors directly into their eyes. As many of us know, this wacky and unique style that Earthbound had would go on to inspire countless other games, including how those games would choose to present their experiences visually. For example, Yume Niki is a game all about dreams, and just how wild, off the wall, and unpredictable they can be. So naturally, it takes the wacky and weird visuals from Earthbound, combines them with SNES style pixel art, and cranks the weird dial up to like, I don't know, like a, like a 12, maybe more, maybe a lot more. I don't think I've seen another game that's been able to capture the weird and even unsettling nature of dreams quite as well as Yume Niki has. Well, most games, but we'll, we'll be getting there in a second. How do you go about representing the inner workings of someone's mind and all of the different things bouncing around in someone's head? How can you recapture the essence of something so visually unpredictable like a dream? Yume Niki answers that by throwing you a plate full of some of the most bizarre and striking visuals I've seen in a game. Pick a door, head inside, and just explore! Explore this dream world and all the crazy, weird visuals it has to show you. One minute you're riding your bike through splotches of random color arranged to look like a face over top of cell Salvador Dali painting background, and the next you're traveling through cold, metallic corridors with strange depictions of what appear to be people? I've heard so many great things about this game over the years, but it wasn't until I played it myself that I realized just how much of a cool trip the whole game can be. I finally got why this game is so special to so many people. And clearly it is, because combined with inspiration from Earthbound yet again would come the dreamlike psychological horror game. Omori. Ah! You don't know how long I've wanted to talk about this game. This is like one of my favorite games ever. I was so invested in its world, its characters, especially you, I really like you. And just how creative of a game it was, especially for something made in RPG Maker. Like it, it didn't even feel like an RPG Maker game. This was awesome. Its story is so haunting, but beautiful. I just couldn't get enough of this game when I first played it. And I wanna just keep gushing about this game over and over again, just talking about all the little intricacies and all the things I love about it. But then I'd be getting off track and then the man holding the script and aiming a gun at my head, oh, he, he wouldn't be very happy then. Bringing the tone down a bit for a second here, being a game with heavy elements of psychological horror though, I thought I should put a brief warning on here. The game can have some creepy and downright disturbing imagery at times, tying into the game's story, main character, and dreamlike world. So if that's not your thing, then I'll be putting up a timestamp in a little bit that you can skip ahead to so you don't have to watch all the creepy shiz. I'm not really going to be showing anything like too intense or over the top, you know, I thought I'd just put up a warning anyways just because, you know, that's not everyone's thing. I won't really be spoiling anything from the game either, so there's no need to worry about that. I'd say if you have even the slightest interest in trying this game out, to go in completely blind, knowing as little as you possibly can. That's how I went into the game, and uncovering the story and the mystery behind it is one of the biggest things that made this experience so enjoyable to me. But the the visuals though, yeah, let's let's get back on track here. Omori obviously has that earthbound influence to its characters and sprite work, but it also sets itself apart in a lot of ways. Like these hand-drawn character portraits. I absolutely love these, along with the artwork done for the enemies you fight and the different little attack animations you have for each move. My favorite parts of this game's visual style is whenever this hand-drawn artwork and animation is used, it's just so pleasant. In some instances. The game starts you off showing you these bright, bubbly visuals, you know, it's, it's a very pleasant and happy looking game. Which makes the cutaways to the horror parts of the game such a stark contrast in comparison. Where in Headspace you have everything pop with color and make you feel all warm and fuzzy on the inside, the horror sections? Oh, a knock at the door? That must be my sister here for a visit. I guess I'll go say hi. You know, maybe I'm, I'm just seeing things. I should just go splash some water on my face in the sink and, and just try and wake myself up a bit.
it stares the same way again. What do you want to care of a game of jump rope? This jarring juxtaposition in visuals will never not catch me off guard. It's so creepy and unsettling, but creative at the same time. You know that one part in Undertale where the game goes from simple pixel art to hyper-realistic, unsettling visuals? Omori is that, but at multiple points throughout the game, and it scares the f*** out of you every single time. Oh! Cool! A whole realistic ass hand coming to grab me! That's- that's fun and not creepy at all! Haha, <laughs> yeah! Just kidding, time skip people! I'm gonna show you some scary sh**! Gotcha! Hello, Frank. something to lighten the mood a bit here and what better way than to pop in a cartridge and turn on the Sega Genesis how about comic zone the entire game is stylized to look like one huge comic book page even down to text bubbles and whack and pow effects popping up on screen when you attack an enemy and speaking of the enemies instead of just having them appear from off screen or through a door or something you actually have a hand drawing them into the comic panel Plus, whenever you're done beating these bad guys up, instead of having the screen unlock and letting you progress forward through the stage like most beat em ups of the time, you just grab hold of the comic panel's edge and fling yourself over to the next one. The game has some of the most creative use of a comic book art style I've seen like this, and the fact that it's all on the Sega Genesis with this fantastic looking pixel art just makes it even better for me. If we're talking high quality 2D pixel art graphics though, then I have to mention Guilty Gear. I found another way to mention Guilty Gear again, bitches! Ooh, shoot too hot, stir the pot! The series originally started out using this high quality animated pixel art. When it was time to switch over to 3D though with Guilty Gear XR, the developers needed to figure out how to transition these stylized 2D characters into 3D models. So their plan? We make the 3D look 2D! A lot of studios and developers have tried using cel shaded art styles to invoke this 2D and 3D look to their world and characters, but none have pulled it off as well as Arc System works with Dragon Ball Fighter Z and Guilty Gear. The characters here really do just seem like 2D animations rather than 3D models because of how perfectly this art style was captured. This style was first used for Guilty Gear x -Ard, but has since only gotten more detailed and impressive with the release of Strive back in 2021. Hey Johnny! What's your favorite kind of alcohol? Anything else you like to drink, Johnny? Just leave. What are you talking about? Don't, don't say that! You know, you can't drink that stuff. That stuff, it's stuff's not good for you. It's obvious that a ton of work has to go into creating the character models and animations here in order to imitate this 2D animated anime style. After making the original character animations, the team would go back and add in little imperfections and small details in order to really capture the style that they were going for. New Frame Plus actually made a really good video going over it a few years ago. I highly recommend giving it a watch if this kind of stuff is interesting to you. There are a lot of games from even back in the early 2000s that still hold up today visually because of how they chose to go about presenting things. One of the most iconic examples of this is The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Well, the art style was a bit, um... What the f*** is this? What is this bull garbage? I'm showing like a I was promised realistic Link ass in this cartoony ass bull I don't even know what I'm looking at. Look at the eyes. I don't know. Well, Link's just supposed to be like... So strong, manly gamer man. I'm getting this child. This child is going to see him being a cartoon and he's not a baby. I'm like cartoons. I'm not a dumb baby. Divisive. At first, people eventually came around to it, with it being a fan-favorite Zelda game both in visual style and just overall. The game still looks really pleasing and pretty today for something that was released in 2002, and that's even without mentioning its HD remake on Wii U makes everything look absolutely gorgeous. This isn't the only time the Zelda games would use a cel shaded style either, as there was a little game called, uh, uh I, I, I can't, I don't know if you've heard of it, um, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, that released in 2017. I think this game speaks for itself. There are so many other games that use cel shading to create fun to downright beautiful visuals too. Ultimate Spider-Man's visuals look like they're ripped straight out of a comic book. Nino Kuni takes a lot of influence from Studio Ghibli for its art direction and looks stunning as a result. In Persona 5, Right. 
Yes, I'm mentioning Persona 5 again, but I don't care because have you seen this game's style? Great portrait art of main characters, flashy visuals and effects, hell they even made the menu stylish as sh**. Persona 5 easily has the best UI of any game I've seen. The different menus just flow so smoothly between each other with this stylized outline of Joker pulling different poses and performing different actions to go from one screen to the other. I'm running out of breath, oh my god! And that's not even mentioning the actual battle system for this game. Every attack you land, whether it be a swipe of your dagger or using a Persona skill, the flashy visuals that pop up on screen as you're doing it add so much weight and impact to those moves. And the little icons and puffs of smoke that pop up to show your XP and money after winning a fight aren't any less satisfying. Plus, you get to jam to this awesome music while looking at it all. I get that so many people talk about how damn good this game looks, but man, it's for a good reason. Persona 5 easily has some of the best art direction for any game I've played before. Playing through this game for the first time helped me to realize just how gorgeous and stunning a game can look with the proper direction and dedication. There is one other game that I've played in recent years that helped to show just how creative a game can get with their visuals too. While I will admit I've never actually beaten this game or played through a super large amount of it, which isn't to knock it, I just haven't had the time to go back to it yet, the one thing that stuck with me from my short time with the game is its gorgeous visual style. So. What f***ing game is it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah baby. baby! Oh, oh yeah. yeah! It's the- it's the it's the Spunk Wolf! Much like Wind Waker, Okami was released in the early to mid 2000s, but manages to stay timeless with its visual style due to just how unique and pretty it is. And again, much like Wind Waker, Okami also has a gorgeous looking HD remaster. This game looks to mimic the style of Japanese watercolor and inkwash painting, creating a world that looks like it was all painted directly onto a canvas. Hell, that very aspect actually ties right back into the gameplay as well, with the player being able to turn the world into a canvas and start drawing on it with an inkbrush in order to interact with the environment. I know I've probably been saying this a lot, but this is one of the most interesting uses of a game art style that I think I've seen, especially when it's integrated into the gameplay like it is here. Games that take on a hand-painted or hand-drawn look like this always end up looking so cool. Games like The Wild at Heart that try to capture the style of something nostalgic like an illustrated child storybook. Or, you know, maybe a storybook kind of aesthetic, yeah, that's not, that's not really your thing, that, that's perfectly fine. Then how about a coloring book? In Chicory, the world is literally your canvas. Use a magical paintbrush to color and draw all over the game world to your heart's content. I'm definitely gonna have to get around to playing this at some point because I can already tell I'm gonna love it. It looks like such a pleasant and fun time. And while we're on the topic of hand-drawn visuals, I can always mention games like Don't Starve, Hollow Knight, and Cuphead, which also use hand-drawn art and animation in their games. Hollow Knight takes hand-drawn animated visuals and puts them over even more Bootylicious hand-drawn backgrounds. I mean, look back there, there's so much extra unnecessary detail put into them, but those extra little touches are what breathe so much life into this game's world. Hollow Knight has this lonely and melancholy atmosphere to it, which is only further enhanced by its fantastic art direction. Don't Starve is a similar story, both in tone and in process, with its artwork starting out as handmade drawings, which are eventually taken and animated digitally to be put into the game. It's almost as if you took a hand-drawn gothic-themed pop-up book and brought it to life. Everything is very sketchy looking, color isn't fully filled in all the way when it comes to darker black objects, and bunches of thin and thick black lines are used to convey the texture of different creatures and objects. It's like a little illustrated papercraft world, even down to the layers of waves in the water. <gasps> Speaking of papercraft art styles, uh, I know pretty pretty clever transition. I know. I know. I'm pretty. I'm pretty proud of that one too. Thanks. <laughs> What do you mean $40,000 in debt? Paper Mario pretty much established this genre of pop-up book looking visuals, and while the games themselves have gone off the deep end in gameplay quality, I've never taken this thing out of the plastic. I don't want this creature to breach containment. I won't deny that its visuals have only gotten even more pretty looking as time has gone on. Whether you agree with the series overly relying on this paper and scrap-like art direction more and more or not, especially with how it's always integrated into the gameplay, it's undeniable that whether you're throwing confetti in the air or slamming paint down onto the ground with a hammer, it, at the very least, looks fantastic while you're doing it. 
And if the whole game being made of crafts isn't your thing, you could always take to Paper Mario inspired games like Bug Fables that take a more classic approach to the art direction. The world looks like a pop-up book, and it's told in chapters like a story, but there's more to the world than just the craft art style. A lot of objects and characters have big black outlines around them, and there's even elements of cell shading used here. It's like something straight out of the GameCube era. Wait a second! Wait a second! That bug has horns! Just like Wayne from High Lakes. You might have talked about some trippy looking visuals earlier with Earthbound and Yume Nikki, but my god, you haven't seen anything yet. Hylix was an RPG Maker game released back in 2015, with the biggest thing setting it apart that instead of having traditional pixel art visuals, it instead opted for something much more creative, that being claymation. Almost everything in this game world is made completely out of clay, from the characters, the environments, and even the attack animations you use in battle. And before these clay models were put into the game too, the game's creator, Mason Lindreth, would bring the models into Photoshop and mess around with its look until they gave off this pseudo-pixel art style. Aside from the game just being really weird and wacky with how it presents itself, it has one of the most standout visual identities for a game I think I've seen, again, all while being made completely in RPG Maker. And just a few years later, these clay visuals and animations would only become even more over the top and strange with the game's sequel. I mean, just look at how all these characters move. I have never once done the drugs, but I would imagine this is what it would look like to be such a rapscallion. <laughs> Wait, does anyone else smell something burning? <gasps> Jeez Louise! Uh, my GameCube's malfunctioning! What could possibly be causing this conundrum? Sony! Why even make your game look realistic when you can turn down that HD slider, baby? Yeah. Lunistis, a charming little indie game with an art style reminiscent of the low poly graphics from something on the PS1. Just because it's low poly though, doesn't mean that the game doesn't look fantastic at times. The game might have an art style that looks like it's from the 5th generation of game consoles, but it's still taking advantage of modern hardware. Same goes for a lot of other games in this kind of style. Anodyne 2, A Short Hike, No Players Online, and Tori 3D, just to name a few. Hell, a good few of the other games by the Tori 3D developer, Macbat 64, Super Kiwi 64, and Beanie are all homages to old school 2D and 3D platformers. And they're all only like a dollar, so that's a really good reason to get them too. Whisper, whisper. <laughs> this next game I'm gonna mention though, while it doesn't have low poly graphics per se, it definitely takes some more simplistic approach to its art style. Going Under is a roguelike all about large corporations being kind of massive shitholes to its workers and rags on certain aspects of those businesses and the strategies they use. For instance, you know that really weird and um, let me be blunt, boring corporate art style that you see used by a lot of businesses nowadays? Well the entire game looks like that and it's great. Every character design and area is minimalistic in the shapes and colors it uses in order to recapture that corporate style. Unlike the style when used in actual business marketing though, it's really charming and creative here. There are so many different cool ways to go about presenting a game, some that are wholly unique to just a few games, or hell, even just a singular game. I think I've pretty much talked about a lot of the game art styles that I want to, even though I'm definitely sure that I missed out on a lot of cool ones and forgot to mention them. You see, there are just so many cool and creative- what the f*** is that doing on my floor? Let me introduce you all to the most creative and underrated game that I've ever played. That isn't an exaggeration, that isn't me just playing this up for some sort of dramatic effect. The fact that this game doesn't get more recognition for just how unique and fun it is, is criminal. So we're gonna let me the f*** out of here? Is this, is this just my fate now? Is this, am I just chilling here? Is this just how things are gonna go now? Oh no! According to the back of the box, Sayonara Wild Hearts is a pop album video game, and I don't think that there's any better way of describing it than that. 
Sayonara Wild Hearts is a rhythm game where you have to perform certain actions to the beat of the music or whenever a prompt comes up on screen. But I have never seen a game in that genre that executes things just as uniquely as this game does. It's not just pressing a button when the prompt comes up, it's riding on motorcycles with bullets shooting out of the front at mecha fox people, shooting flying hate skulls with a bow and arrow, drifting your car around a tight ass turn at Mach 20, riding on your skateboard through a dream world while listening to a beautiful remix of Claire de Lune, or riding that motorcycle that I mentioned before on this bitch's stream of barf! Whoa! We're going pretty fast now! So then, what does all of this have to do with the game's art direction? Well, I don't know, you tell me! You seen this sh Music, gameplay, and visuals all go hand in hand here. When the level design changes, so does the music. When the mood changes as a result of that music change, so does the gameplay. It all just flows so well together to create one of the most beautiful, creative, and fun gaming experiences I've had in recent memory. And this is all while the game was only an hour to a couple hours long. This physical copy was only 35 bucks, but I would have gladly paid more to experience this f***ing fantastic piece of art for the first time. How long a game is needing to equate to its monetary value is such a dumb mindset, and I think that this game is the perfect example that the quality of the game is really all that matters. Unless you're a scalper selling these games online for like hundreds and hundreds of dollars, can you just please like not do that? That'd be great, thanks. The retro game market makes me really sad. Watching footage of the game can only show so much of what this experience has to offer, but I don't think I have a harder recommendation for a game to play right now than Sayonara Wild Hearts. Except for Pikmin 4, you should really go play that right now, it's such a f***ing good game. All I can say is that, damn man, this is an absolute must play. I feel like everyone needs to at least try this out at some point. It's just amazing. Sayonara, wild hearts. Oh. Oh. You don't think you could have let me out of like normal f***ing size? No, no, it's fine. Don't try to yourself. I'll just like, I'll get myself up. I'll get myself up there somehow. Don't, don't even worry about What do you want to care for a game of Chopro?